Hey guys, Tian here. Um, I want to talk about a pretty big topic today, which is um, steroids and hair loss. Um, what state, what steroids are safest for your hair and uh, what steroids are the worst and what steroids are just moderately hair dangerous. Um, so I want to, I want to first state how um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there on Facebook groups and forums and whatnot of what steroids are hair safe and what steroids will destroy your hair and what they base it off of. So if any if any of you frequent forums, Facebook groups, whatever, you'll know there's um there's kind of a standard to judge um how androgenic a steroid is going to be and also how anabolic it's going to be. And what they base this off of is um the anabolic androgenic rating charts that you see posted all over online. And uh, these charts are all based around the standard of testosterone. So testosterone being, um, you know, it, it, it's the standard. It's 100 anabolic, uh, 100 androgenic, because this is what they're comparing every other steroid to. So, you know, whatever, take, take Anavar, for example. They wanted to compare um, how much more anabolic or less anabolic and how much more androgenic or less androgenic uh, to testosterone it is. So testosterone has to have a rating. That's 100 and 100. Uh, Anavar, for example, it turned out to be more anabolic, um, causing more muscle growth um, and less androgenic in the study. So um, Anavar, as an example, testosterone is 100, and we'd compare that to Anavar, which uh, only came back a rating of 30 uh, of how badly it affected the prostate. So, um, yeah, this is based off um, the prostate tissue, and it's also based off um, rodents as well. So it's not human, so that kind of throws it out the window a little bit. Um, being an animal, and on top of it, you know, your 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 prostate will have a lot of similarities. Um, um, to other um, uh, secondary sites um, since, you know, the muscle and prostate is completely different with our androgenic receptors um, and, and what binds to it and what binds to it at what strength. Um, so the prostate, however, is still not your, your skin tissue. It, it, it's still not the exact same um, tissue. So that throws it out the window as well. So um, the studies aren't, aren't um, definitely something we can use as a gold standard and uh, the real world results shows us, you know, that it's, it's pretty much garbage. Um, all of it, same with muscle growth. Um, you know, something like Anavar being, um, I believe it's 300 rating for its, um, anabolism, which, you know, on a equal dose standard, you do not see Anavar causing three times the muscle growth as a uh, testosterone. So, um, yeah, the whole anabolic androgenic rating, people use this to determine how androgenic a uh, steroid is going to be, how bad it's going to affect your hair, um, you know, like Anavar, Winstrol, Masteron, um, all these drugs with a lower androgenic rating than testosterone. These are all regarded as hair safe by a lot of people because um, this rating on, um, on a chart um, is saying it's hair safe because it's the numbers are less androgenic, which again is it doesn't relate to us. Uh, the real world results show that it doesn't relate to us. Um, so basically, what I wanted to compile here is um, what the actual real world results show us, and to not go by um, the charts out there because they just again what we see happening to people with what they run it, it's not. It's not what we, it's not the same. Um, the reason I wanted to make this video is because to a lot of people, I'm known as a hair loss guy um, uh, for about 10 years now, probably um, just for the fact that I've helped reverse a lot of people's hair loss, um, whether it was simply by altering uh, what compounds they use or um, doing, you know, a specific approach, um, you know, topicals and whatnot on the hair. Um, I have my hair loss article as well on my site. Um, I'm sure most of you who are listening to this anyway have read it. Um, just explaining the mechanism behind hair loss. Um, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> so jumping right into it, um, I want to basically go by go by a list that I kind of wrote up. Um, what's safest? What is um, you know moderately safe, and what is the worst for your hair? 
Um, and again, this list isn't based off science at all because the science, if we went by the science, we would be running items that are literally the worst for your hair in um, the real world. Um, so yeah, this is purely anecdotal. Um, um, and again, this is based off about 10 years experience of um, hundreds and hundreds of followers, clients, um, of people who are um, extremely hair loss prone to just moderately hair loss prone and just, you know, trialing everything under the sun um, as well as on myself. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, let me basically jump right into it here um, with what's the safest for hair loss. So um, I'm, I might edit this and throw up a list so you guys can see it and, you know, just kind of see how I how I broke things down. Um, so yeah, the one that I've absolutely seen never cause hair loss in anyone, no matter what, is DECA. Um, out of my 10 years, hundreds of clients and followers, I've never seen DECA at any dose cause hair loss. Um, again, just to be just to be clear, this is purely uh, personal experiences. This isn't based off science or anything like that. Um, and this is uh, mostly in males um, as well. Um, so yeah, um, DECA, I've never seen cause hair loss in anyone. Not a, not a single person in my um, hundreds and uh, hundreds of hundreds of clients and followers. Um, it's very hair safe. And again, the doses I, you know, I've seen people, it's, you know, people run it from 200 milligrams to uh, 5,000 milligrams is what I've seen. And I've never seen it cause hair loss. And again, I'm, I'm not just comparing this to people who don't get hair loss normally. These comparisons are to people who get hair loss from other steroids and or naturally. Um, another side note that I want to toss in there about the DECA is when people run DECA solo uh, or DECA base cycles, um, they actually will see, um, a lot of them will see a reversal of their hair loss because this is putting you into a better state um, uh a better hormone state uh, than you naturally would be because let's say naturally you are um you know you have low test you let's say naturally you have the the male uh pattern balding um hormone profile which is um you know a bit higher prolactin your testosterone's low um and, and again it, it's you don't want to compare that fully because your scalp tissue hormone profile is different than the serums, but balding men still had a serum uh, hormone profile that was different from non-balding men. So yeah, uh, basically DECA puts you into a safer state hair loss wise uh, than you would have naturally. And that's why I see reverse hair loss in a lot of people. Um, so yeah, the next safest steroid uh, would be D-ball. D-ball being I've seen it. I, I don't even want to say I've seen it cause hair loss in people because I, I've, I've had maybe one or two people claim that they saw a little bit of an increased shedding on D-ball. But these people were having a bit of a shedding issue before they started and they couldn't calm it down. And again, this is out of hundreds and hundreds of followers and clients. Uh, so to me, I put it as in the um, zero hair loss category. Uh, but just, you know, I want to be as um, <clears throat> um, apparent as as open as, po you know, sh apparent as possible here showing that, you know, what I've actually seen, but still putting it into perspective. So D-ball, I consider it does not cause hair loss at all. Um, however, you will see online a lot of people say, oh, I'm getting shedding on D-ball. However, you will only see this in people that are running testosterone cycles, you know, for the past decade or more uh testosterone has always been a base in cycles people add d-ball testosterone even trt doses of testosterone put a lot of people in the upper range of prolactin and estrogen uh so you go and add d-ball and you just you know you're just worsening um your um your your already poor hormone profile for um androgenic side effects um so yeah, uh, that's what we have for D-ball. That is, you know, it's safe. And that's why I, I like to compare to the 70s bodybuilders too, where D-ball was used in rampant doses. Um, P.D. Grimkowski, um, uh, the co-founder of Gold's Gym, um, he was known to run D-ball by the bottles. Uh, he admitted that, you know, uh, multiple bottles a day. Um, and again, a lot of those guys admit to uh, such extreme doses of D-ball and you never seen hair loss back then in any in any high amounts, you know what I mean? You, you could spot a couple guys with hair loss. Um, so D-ball is my hair safe with those few little warnings. I wouldn't even call them a warning. I have absolutely no issue for somebody that's having hair loss telling them, hey, Deccan D-ball is safe. 
Um, the last one here that we have on hair safe with absolutely zero hair loss. This one isn't confirmed because I've had not I've have not had enough clients and followers to test this one to see if it is 100% hair safe. But myself and um, the about four or so users I've had had use it um, experienced absolutely no hair loss, but one of them. Um, this one person was uh, pretty bald to begin with, and he, he did regrow a lot of hair. And he's been on a whole cocktail of different mixtures of um, items for a while on and off, trying new and different things. Um, but M trend did cause him hair loss, so it's not one that I'm confident saying that it's going to be safe for everybody. But the you know myself and um, the few other people that I've had had trial it, it's been safe, but one. And when I say safe, I mean zero increased shedding. Um, so yeah, that one is a bit. Uh, that one's still up in the works to see how safe it actually is. Um, the next on my list is low to none. So instead of just, I. The wording on some of these categories are a little bit tricky just because, um, well, I'll explain as I go on here. And I included other items besides steroids on, on this list as well because they're, you know, they're very common items that people use. Um, so low to none, we have Clomid, um, HGH, and Anavar. I know a few of you are going to be shocked there at HGH. You know, a lot of people look at it to help regrow hair. Um. So HGH, especially in higher doses, um, what a lot of people, what they'll see from this generally is a prolactin-based hair loss. Um, prolactin increases your androgen um, receptor sensitivity. So that, you know, that is one mechanism in it as well. But um, this is low to none. Um, I, I do. So when I category this, you know, it's very hard to um, taken all the people that I've had as clients and followers and, um, you know, kind of, um, make a conclusion based off, um, w what I've seen. Um, and, and it's not even just, uh, my followers and clients. If you even did a Google search of, uh, HH and hair loss, you'll see people are running, you know, a cycle. They don't have any hair loss. They've run this cycle 20 times over and all of a sudden they added growth hormone and bam, they started to notice hair loss. Um, so it is out there. Um, Again, I'm rating it as in low to none. Um, and what I mean by low to none is that I would say you have about a 1 in 10 chance. And this is me giving some very vague rough numbers when, I, when I'm giving these statistics for you guys. Um, so yeah, um, and Clomid is the same. Um, I'd say about 1 in 10. Um, it, it's very... It's very unlikely that you see it. And when you do, it is very minimal shedding. Um, very minimal. I, I would even put it at 1 to 10 as give, me giving it a poor rating. I would even say 1 to 20. It is very unlikely. Um, it, it's very hard to classify that one. I don't see it often at all. Um, it's one I wouldn't worry about. And I am very hair conscious. I will not run anything that will even give me the slightest bit of risk of hair loss. But it does, it does happen, and again, it's a very mild shedding, but Clomid is something that I have no issue running. Um, you know, I, it, I, I don't see it often enough, and I don't see it in any great amount, basically. Um, and then the last one in low to none, again, is Anavar. This one is, is more in the low side than anything. Um, I know everybody out there thinks Anavar is safe. Oh, Anavar, you know, it's safe for females, and uh, it's just a low androgenic steroid. Uh, my real world experience, and if you give it actual, you know, just a Google to see forms, this one does cause hair loss. Absolutely. Um, and just about every single user I've had um, that has hair loss, Anavar has caused hair loss in every single one of them. Um, you know, in most hair loss sufferers, you know, they really keep track of their hair. You know, they, they know when that shedding has gone up from, you know, they shake their hair over the sink and they count their hairs and you know they know when it's gone up when it's doubled or even tripled um each time they do that so uh and myself as well um so yeah anivar is low um it again it, i see it happening about every single user but it's in a lower amount still something i'm concerned about so example if somebody comes to me and say hey i want to avoid hair loss i will not tell them to use anivar um it's just too hard to regain all that hair that you lost, even if it's a little bit of them, even if it's um, just a little bit. So it's in the low category, but I still would not suggest it. Again, this is if you're 
want to keep your hair at all costs and your hair is so important to you. Um, now, next is medium. Um, in medium, we have Tess. Um, I know a lot of you will probably be surprised because, you know, I'm known to hate Tess so much to people. Um, but Tess, I find, is uh, medium. Um, medium being, um, it, I would say, in the amount of users that I see, I, again, when I say the amount of users that I see get hair loss from it, I am talking about people that naturally do get hair loss. But sometimes you can run an item and it doesn't really increase your natural hair loss. Um, testosterone, I would say it's about 50-50 about the people who get an increased shedding from it. And I'm referring this to more of TRT doses too, by the way. And the uh, hair loss amount from it is still only about medium. Um, and it's like it's not an insane amount where you see the you know, the hair just falling out of your scalp at a rapid rate. It's something, you know, that it, it's mild, but you know, it's definitely there. And again, that's only about 50% of users. The other 50, I see get very little. Um, so it's, it's not that hair toxic. Um, you know, it's, but again, we're talking more TRT doses. You want to run, you want to run, um, a gram. It's a bit of a different story. Um, so yeah, um, the next one is uh, T ball. Um, this one is a big shock because um, I used to think it was hair safe too with a hair loss rating of zero. Um, another thing I want to stress here is that whenever somebody gets hair loss of something, um, I like them to somehow get it lab tested, whether it's you know third party uh, testing or even a simple lab, uh, lab max or items like that. Um, you know, just to be sure what what the compound is labeled is what it is, because you know you see a lot of times you know Deca can be test and uh, Anavar is really Winstrol. So yeah, T-ball with its androgenic rating of zero, this causes hair loss in everybody that I've seen basically. Um, however, the hair loss is a low to medium. It, like I said, it's very hard for me to classify these, give you guys um, a proper classification. You know, I'm not basing it off any studies, not to, you know, I can't compare, oh, T-ball caused a 50% increase in shedding and Anivar caused 20%. You know, that's just not um, possible. Obviously, no no researcher would want to do that anyways. Um, so yeah, um, T-ball, in every single user, basically, I, I see it happen. And um, the hair loss shedding is about medium. That's why it's in the medium group. Um, it's about on par with par with testosterone. Um, yeah, so again, if you're a hair loss sufferer, I, I don't suggest this one anymore at all. It, it's just not safe. Um, the next one is Novadex. So this one, more than Clomid for his term, um, I see this happen in a fair bit of people. I would say upwards 50 to 75% of people I see it happening, and it's a mild to medium hair loss what happens. Um, it, I try to avoid Nova at all costs for those that are hair loss sufferers um, because it you know, it is, it, it's, a, it's a higher risk one, uh, but it's not an, an, an immense hair loss, like I said. Um, so the next category is um, medium hard. Again, I'd like to say this is just, um, you know, this is steroids that are hard on your hairline, but I had to classify it as a medium hard because it's not, you know, it, it's not a very big step. I noticed going from the, the steroids that are moderately bad on your hair to the ones that are hard on your hair. However, that's person dependent. Um, somebody where test is medium, uh, one in the medium hard group could be actually be a lot harder, you know, twice as bad on your hair, on your hairline than, um, the medium. So the medium hard group, um, I'll list them all first. We have EQ, Equipoise, um, or Boldenone, um, Anadrol, Ment, uh, Trestolone, Ment, uh, AIs, um, that one, I kind of just lumped them in together. Anadrol, Primo, and HCG. So let's start with EQ here. Um, EQ is one, again, I notice in about almost every single user here gets hair loss from it, and the hair loss from it is medium to hard. Some it can be compared to, I'd say, testosterone. Um, about half the use, a bit more than half the users, I'd say it's equal to testosterone. But in the other half of the users, it's a lot harder on your hair than testosterone. It, it, I'd say pretty hard, like you're looking at well, it depends on what hair loss state. If you're starting from a state where you're not having any hair loss, you know, you're running DECA, everything's great. You're going to notice an immense shedding from it. Um, 
so yeah eq is one i never suggest ever uh, for those who are hair prone <laughs> if you're not hair prone go ahead um if you like it uh anadrol is the next one um this one i see again about almost every user and the hair loss is it, it's pretty rough it, it's hard again it's medium to hard more on the side of a, a harder hair loss where you're seeing a lot more hair shedding um then we have trestolone mint or mint whatever you want to call it um uh trestolone mint um it, it it's i'd say again in most every single user and it's it's pretty hard um it's definitely a noticeable shedding it's about there with anadrol it's it, it's a harsh one um nothing else more to say about that one um uh what's next primo this one is a funny one you know people they say oh primo so hair safe females run it whatever um every single hair loss user i've ever had it on even low doses that's which is the funny thing you know um if you ask any of my followers or clients i like primo at a lower dose especially if you're a hair loss sufferer but even low doses 100 to 200 milligrams you so the lower the dose you will notice a lot less shedding um but it is one that definitely causes hair loss and just about almost every single user and dosage wise it goes from a lighter hair loss to a very very harsh hair loss um and that's when that's with a very low androgenic rating but basically every steroid i've mentioned so far has a less androgenic rating besides a couple than testosterone and they are very um hair toxic um one of the last ones hcg um hcg really drives prolactin through the roof and in many estrogen as well <clears throat> um, this i notice even at very low doses you know 150 um iu doses dosages three times a week will cause an immense increase in hair shedding way worse than testosterone um hcg is best to be avoided at all costs for sure if you're a hair loss sufferer uh and then we have ais um so aromazin uh, specifically uh that is one of the worst if you are a hair loss sufferer and need an ai do not touch that one um it's androgenic in itself the compound um so that is one at all costs you do not want to touch most users report you know the hair loss is very immense to that one um letrol and armidex though on the other hand are actually a more milder hair loss um even in very higher doses which is strange um well, uh, not that strange considering aromazin is um you know it's androgenic in itself so it's not that strange so um those ais are actually a lot milder but depending on the dose and how hard you crash estrogen the hair loss can be harsh so that's a that's a tricky one I'll, you know you getting estrogen into range i don't really see those causing hair loss that much but if you overdo it they i see it cause immense shedding um the last ones we have which are the worst on hair uh when i say the worst now here's the thing about these ones um and this has been my own personal experience with it as well when i when i uh first ran uh one of these compounds particularly most of all these steroids what i've noticed is you know tons of people will be running steroids for years tests um d-ball anadrol you know just uh, all the normal common mixtures eq and they don't have hair loss or they're, they're considered non-hair loss steroid users um they run one of these compounds and i've seen this dozens and dozens just i can't even count i don't even know how many times that i've seen this happen zero hair loss they run one of these compounds and they see immense hair loss like I'm talking, you know, they're going bald next week, basically. Like the hairs, you know, they're running their hand their hands through their hairs and they just see immense hair falling out of their scalp. Um yeah, and I'm not even sure if I listed those already or if I just started talking about it, but um the ones that I see this happening are Tren, uh, Winstrol, Masteron, Proviron, and Superdrol so um trend let's start well, let's start with trend first trend is the iffy one it's some people will not get hair loss on this even though it's a strong uh androgenic steroid um but the people who do it, it you're you know your your hair's pouring out of your head basically it is insanely bad you you can run your hands through your hair and your um your hands look like like bear mitts like like they're just cover in um covered in hair horrible like one of the worst basically um again though from real world experience this 
it's it's hard to say. I'd say it's almost 50-50, to be honest, that you either don't get hair loss from Trend at all, or it literally scalps you instantly. Uh, my hair loss experience with Trend, actually, um, I had a few years pr use um, of uh, items like D-Ball, Test, you know, typical cycles, Test Deck of D-Ball, and I never had any hair loss. My hair was perfect, thick, hairline was great, and I touched Trend. Uh, my hairline was so poor. I used to actually wish I tell people this, that I, I wish I had hair loss. I was like, I wish I had hair loss so my hair would thin out a little bit because I hated how thick it was. You know, at the time I didn't understand fully hair loss men, you know, I didn't picture the receding hairline. I was just picturing thinning out of my hair. Um, so yeah, I use Trenton. Um, 50 milligrams every other day or three times a week to be exact. Um, yeah, I used Trend. I got 1.5 weeks into it, so about four or five shots. And I remember going into the bathroom, and I forget what I did. Um, I think maybe I was styling my hair or something, and I looked at my... And again, I've never noticed hair loss before in anything. I looked at my hands, and they were covered in hair. Literally, just every centimeter, every millimeter of my hand was covered in hair. And I remember just staring at it thinking, you know, what's going on? Did the gel like rip it out or something? Like, you know, I just didn't know what's going on. And I start shaking my hair over the sink and literally I just covered the sink in it. And I kept doing it. It kept going. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and this persisted um, at a slow, I stopped it immediately. I stopped everything. And this persisted for the next month and a half or so. Um, <clears throat> but the amount of hair loss that came out in that time, again, I had a perfectly complete hairline and I had to, I remember because I still have pictures of, it, I had to have lost about an inch and a half or two inches right on the temples, which was, <clears throat> which was insane because you figure at a, um, a hair loss state like that, uh, like a, a, a telogen type hair loss, when people see it's all over the scalp. Uh, so you necessarily don't see just at the hairline. However, funny thing in uh, literature is that um, we'll notice hair loss, male pattern baldness, actually. Um, it, it's noticed that most men, when male pattern baldness starts, the onset of it is they have a, a telogen uh, shock hair loss. And once that happens, you know, the they just keep losing hair after that. But obviously not at the rate of um, the shock telogen hair loss, but at a normal male pattern baldness rate. So it's just interesting that, you know, they notice that most men uh, end up having experience like that. Um, and that's what I noticed. Um, right after that, every single thing I touched that was a hair prone steroid caused me hair loss. So um, that's one big item. I, I tell these items in general, I tell people, you know, if you don't have hair loss I and you're worried about hair loss, I would never touch these items just because um, I see this happen a lot. Um, Winnie, uh, not much else to say about that. Um, and most... Every user, literally every user, I would say that has hair loss and a huge share of people that have never had hair loss in their lives, in their life, um, they run Winstrol and bam, they literally just see hair fall out of their head. Um, the next two is, um, mass, the next three, Masteron, <clears throat> Provion, and Superjoel. Um, all of these, same thing. Users that have never seen um, hair loss in their life, they run any of these compounds and literally, you know, out of nowhere, they're like, what the hell? I'm not a hair loss sufferer. I'm literally balding at an insanely rapid rate. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, those are all the ones that I would avoid at all costs. If you're any little bit worried about hair, or even if you're not worried about hair and you're just unsure if you really care about hair loss, um, I would highly suggest you do not touch any of those. Um, <clears throat> What else on the list? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, if you are a hair loss sufferer, the only thing you're going to want to run, like I said, is DECA and or DECA and D-Ball. Um, I'm very confident in saying D-Ball, again, as I explained earlier, does not cause hair loss. You know, it just... I don't see it, and I know a lot of people are a little bit scared of it because on some sites it's rated as, you know, oh no, D ball is a hair loss steroid. You're going to notice some increased shedding. This is all from test users, and the same people or sites that are suggesting this as a hair loss steroid are also mentioning that Anavar and Primabolin is hair safe or T ball or so many other steroids. So, um, 
yeah, absolutely. You know, I just, I wouldn't listen to that information. You know, people are basing it off, again, using severely more androgenic compounds um, in their cycle and um, basing off the androgenic, androgenic rating charts. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, those, again, those are my hair safe steroids. If you at all costs are scared of steroids and hair loss, um, yeah, you are not going to see it on DECA and you are 99.9% .9 likely not going to see it on D-Ball. And both of these steroids, um, the doses I've seen them use and I myself use, again, we're talking in the grams of ranges, DECA at five grand, um, D-Ball at uh, insane, you know, 200, 300 milligrams a day, no hair loss. So yeah, hair loss suffer, stick to DECA, stick to D-Ball and um, you'll keep your hair. All right, guys, um, hopefully I'll uh, upload this video soon for you and uh, put in some edits on my charts that I wrote up. Uh, if I don't, I'll add a link at the bottom of the video uh, on my website or my Facebook page that I'll have um, uh, to the article when I'm going to write with it and um, some charts on what's safe and what's not. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, take care.